Oh, hello, and welcome to episode 19, is that right? That is right. Of the franchise. I'm your host, Daniel Ehrenberg. I'm your host, Harry Papali. And today we're covering a couple of Luminous films. Uh, <laughs> Friday the 13th, part 5, a new beginning. A sure new is. beginning for this great franchise. Yep. And part six, Jason Lives. Yep. A universal monster film. <laughs> um, that's what they're going for. Uh, yeah. But let's start with part five. Let's, uh, hey, can we go we ahead? To, yeah. Can we go ahead and say the tweet that, or it was a text that I sent you? Mm-hmm. Because I, all, I want to start with that. Sure. Oh, oh, you want me to say it? Okay, yes. yeah. Sorry. Um. <clears throat> I um, was watching, uh, I watched these movies um, yesterday. In succession. In succession, which is something I don't usually do, but I and, did it. And not a good idea. <laughs> well, <laughs> Dan said, uh, he wrote to me, he wrote, early prediction, uh, I think you'll like part five a lot less than me, and you'll like part six more than you'll expect to. Yeah, and. I and I was kind of like, oh, oh okay, interesting. Uh, it doesn't usually send me stuff like that, like predictions. But uh, wow, was this guy fucking right? It, it was an amazing prediction. Like it was perfect. Well, I was halfway through part six when I sent that. Mm -hmm. And here's what is remarkable about these movies: part five is an incredible piece of shit. Oh, thank God. Oh. But I love it. Yeah, but no, I love me. it. I knew yeah. you wouldn't, because you don't have the same kind of affection for the pieces of shit of this series that I do. <laughs> right. Uh, right. But part six, they're trying to make a movie. You you are right, man. They're, they're, they're really going for it. It's, it's the, like an actual movie. Everything is, is elevated. Everything, like yeah. every aspect, of the a story tell. I mean, should we? Are we? Well, it's in line with what we're talking about, right? So I can always. You can jump. give a blanket statement, but we're starting with part five here. Yeah, I, I, th I, I thought it, that it's it's my Jason movie. I get it. I, I totally <laughs> get it. It's not mine. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I get it. It's a I, movie. I loved it. And I actually remember, remember how I told you at the beginning of this, uh, how I hadn't really, I wasn't sure which ones I'd seen besides, besides one and two, which were kind of in my memory, um, like vague parts of it. I remember, I had seen this, I guess, like, I think this is one of those ones that just runs on like IFC during Halloween. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. And I've seen it. Like, I, I remembered things, um, not like specific plot lines or anything, but I remember Jason being, like, indestructible and, and well, digging him up. Well, that's and, the rest of the series. And I love it. I, that's what I want, I guess. Which, yeah, like, not to spoil yeah. anything, but part six ends with, like, Jason anchored to the bottom of Crystal Lake. Oh, it's so good. But, and and he's, he's, like, risen the beginning of part seven <laughs> like you see oh, him man. yeah um, yeah no i was i was i gotta say i was blown away i guess you know I, and i don't think blown I, away I like jason he took like fucking 30 bullets <laughs> in that movie yeah and i don't think uh i i wasn't you know this is the first time i've i don't think it would have happened so starkly it definitely wouldn't have been so stark if if i hadn't just watched five of these fucking things, right? I mean, there's no way. I would have watched this and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. So That's Jason. the best thing, though. Right. I, I really think this right. franchise benefits from marathoning. Yeah, I think you're probably... I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's start with uh, part five, though. A yeah. New, a new beginning. A new beginning. Part you'll, five. You'll, you'll recall part four was the final chapter. Yeah, I had I had mistakenly thought that uh, we were done. Oh yeah, yeah, no. And uh, no, we, we got a ways to go. Yeah. <laughs> Part five, a new beginning. Just in case anyone didn't understand, I was being droll. 
uh, I, didn't, I didn't. I think everybody knew that. Okay, I didn't ever think we were done. But I've made that joke a couple times, and after, I after I made it the first time, you oh. rolled. You rolled with it so perfectly. I thought, I wonder if people are going to think that I think there's only four Friday the Thirteenth. No, I think it's great that you <laughs> used the word droll, though. Uh, hey, we're directed by Danny Steinman. Uh, yeah, we sure are. Martin Kitrosser is back. I forgot about that. He's the uh, Tarantino writer, or script supervisor, excuse oh, me, right, certainly right. not writer. Uh, he has a writing credit on this one, along with David Cohen, not the one that created Futurama. <laughs> and <laughs> and Danny Steinman, he took a writing credit on this bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. By the way, David Cohen, I did look him up. Mm. Um, m- my most favorite credit... <laughs> is a movie I've never heard of that I want to watch now. Okay. Okay, it's called Hollywood Zap <laughs> from 1986. And Ooh, right, right on the heels, huh? Yeah. Um, and this movie. Uh, in the IMDb trivia for it, it says it was originally planned to be Porky's 4, but then like Porky's 3 didn't do that well. That's shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but here's the premise, according to IMDb. Okay. A story of two friends, one searching for his father, the other searching for the ultimate sexual video game competition. <laughs> There's never oh. been anything more up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> Can you find it? Did you find the movie? No, yeah. I have not found the movie. Uh, but I will. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta watch that. Right. Holy fuck, does that sound good. That's uh, quite a dichotomy of stories going on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's pretty good. Okay. I'll say right off the bat that I Wait, had... Uh, I'm not oh. done. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Please, by all means. Please apologize. But yes, I'm sorry, by this, all means. This is also Danny Steinman, by the way, the director. This uh, Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, is his final credit on IMDb. <laughs> I saw that! <sighs> yeah, was Dan, done. Dan and me, uh, you probably wouldn't have gathered this, but Dan tends to be like a, like most people... Dan tends to be a strictly IMDb guy, and I'm kind of a strictly Wikipedia man. <laughs> it's true. Isn't it true? It's been that yeah. way forever, for as long as I can remember. I Yes, yes, folks, I have IMDb as an app on my phone. Uh, I just don't care for the clunkiness of the design of the website, so I, I try to avoid it. But uh, it didn't matter because I found that same information on Wikipedia, and I fucking love that. It's hilarious. This was it. No like, one hired him after this. And by the way, this movie, <laughs> I love it. I'm going to go ahead and say it right here. It's it's kind of one of my favorite Friday the 13th. Really? But it's a failure on every level. Uh, yeah, he, you know, just to, you know, well, it's to save time and to jump ahead a little bit. Uh, I, I, I had uh, two LVPs. Um, I don't want, I, I don't like that I've been doing that lately, but with these movies, old. Oh, you know, sweet Jesus, it's hard. So he's one of them. Um, well, look, but he was supplanted by someone else who will it's, get. It's some somewhat frustrating this movie because if you want to know what a Friday the Thirteenth movie is like, I kind of want to point you to this one. Really? Yeah, because it has great kills. It has great nudity. It has great drug use. Oh yeah. This movie is is like disgusting. <laughs> and that's what this series represents to me. <laughs> but <coughs> it's not Jason. Right. You know? Yeah, so that that was, you know, obviously that was a big problem. Um I read that this whole set, this whole movie, is, it, is this true or is this apocryphal? I mean, it's easy to believe 
that everyone who was on, involved in this movie was just completely coked and wasted out of their mind. <laughs> yeah, I read that too. It's probably true. Yeah. Um, and this movie, I mean, we didn't talk about the ambiguous ending of part four. Mm. Mm-hmm. But uh, we see Corey Feldman at the right. end of that fourth one. And right. he's sort of staring blankly at the camera. Yeah, he's gone. And it's like, oh, he saw some shit, and now he's going to be the killer. Right. And so what part five was doing was there's like a copycat Jason murderer. Right. Um, it's like a whodunit, this one, for the first yeah. time since the first movie. Right. And then they're, they're trying to set up like three more, which they're always doing with this fucking franchise. Yeah, and and the next two were gonna be Tommy Jarvis as the murderer, right? Um, but but nobody with liked the lack this of movie, yeah. and so then Jason just comes back in the next one, right? And so like Tommy Jarvis is a few years older now. And, he is, uh, by the way. We're in sci-fi territory again. Again, like, they they made all that fucking effort to catch up <laughs> to the year. Right. In, the, in the third and fourth movies by making them take place, like, just later that night. Right. And now, all of a sudden, it's like Tommy Jarvis is, like, 18. So, what, we're, like, five years in the future again? Yeah. But everyone has feathered hair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the foresight continues here. Uh, it's unreal. Which, also, I always found interesting... Jason's going to be getting up there soon. Well, by the way, we didn't yeah. talk about... Have we ever talked about how this is the origin of the podcast? Uh, like this I, franchise? I think it might have got a quick mention on like a preview, but I, I go ahead. Yeah. Like, w the first time I watched all the Friday the 13th movies in succession with my girlfriend was when I came up with the idea for this podcast. Because this franchise is insane. Right. It's so schizophrenic. It's so crazy that we're covering five and six this week, and by ten we're in outer space. Absolutely. It's, in, it's amazing. We go to hell soon, too, right? We sure do. And there's a character this week that was, like, fucking with Jason. And I think it's in part six. And oh no, it's Tommy Jarvis. It's the third Tommy Jarvis. And, oh, we get him again, huh? Yeah, and he goes, uh, "Jason belongs in hell." And I was like, "No, he doesn't. You haven't seen part nine. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't go well. Yeah. <laughs> wait, Tommy. Wait, uh, Tommy. Tommy. He still got to go to Manhattan. Cool off, Tommy. <laughs> Cool off. He's still got to go to Manhattan. He's got to fight Carrie. He's got to go to space. It, it's no, just, don't space worry. is afterwards. No, I know. I'm yeah. just saying, don't don't worry about uh, hell yet. Yeah. Yeah. Concern yourself with the present when you right. still still just tried to drown him. Although I got to say, a, a, what a great death. But anyway, all right, we're not there. I'm not there at all. I still haven't done the stats on part five. Yeah, I do it. Do Listen, it. released March 22nd, not Friday the 13th, 1985. Uh, on a budget of $2.2 million. I think it's like slightly less than the last one. Okay. Um, box office 21.9. It was considered a failure, but... Not so much that Paramount wasn't like, make another one next year. Yeah, and by Henry's math, it made 20 times its budget. Martin J. Paramount took out his cigar and said, <laughs> Hey, give me one of those Friday movies. <laughs> Hurry the fuck up. <laughs> Martin J. Paramount. Yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a good, yeah. All right. One of my one of my pals. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was number forty one in box office for the year. Good standing. Just ahead of the Black Cauldron, which uh, was the movie that failed so badly for Disney that they like changed their whole crew. 
Do you remember that? I always I confuse that with the Dark Crystal. No, that's, no, Dark that's Crystal. That's the Henson movie, right? Dark Crystal is live action. That's the Henson, like yeah. That's right. Yeah. And what is the Black Cauldron? Is that, that a cartoon? Was an, yeah, that's a cartoon. It's an animated movie, and it failed so badly that like Disney fired all their people, and they hired Jeffrey Katzenberg oh. to like, reboot their entire animation division. Ooh. Um, there's a documentary about that. I can't recall the name right now, but it's good. He's a big wig. Yeah, yeah. And so like the first one after the Black Cauldron was The Little Mermaid. Ooh, wow. Yeah, big they, hit. Yeah, they like really changed shit up. Yeah. So this movie did better than The Black Cauldron. <laughs> it also did better than Porky's Revenge, okay. which is the third Porky's movie that didn't do well enough so that they can make Hollywood Zap a Porky's movie. Right, sure. Yeah. Hollywood Zap. Um, but it, it did better than the Care Bears. Oh, no, it, worse, sorry. <laughs> it did just worse than the Care Bears movie. Okay. Santa Claus the movie with Dudley Moore. Ugh. Didn't we, re- like, talk about that on a previous episode? That did come up. I don't remember why. What the fuck was the context for that? I cannot tell you. Maybe we were, was that the first episode ever where you were in fist talking about how Die Hard is not a Christmas movie and we were just jokingly naming Christmas movies and then one of us said Santa Claus? It's possible. I don't know. Uh, and Weird Science also was right there just ahead of it. I thought Jeez. that movie was a huge hit. So did I. Yeah. Apparently Wait. not. Okay. But we're opening here on Corey Feldman. Yeah. He's back for a cameo. Yeah. He was apparently filming Goonies, and he like took a day off to film this cameo. Yeah, I read that. And it's basically a dream sequence. I don't know. It's so unnecessary. Like, is Corey Feldman that big that they were like, oh, we got Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta use him. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he's there, and he's dreaming about, like, Jason's grave being torn up by these fellas, and then they get stabbed. Right. Which I, I kind of wanted to be true because they get stabbed with a machete, and it's like, you stabbed? You, you like, <laughs> you buried Jason with a machete? <laughs> It's like you see. Well, you know, when you, you know, bury someone with, like, you know, I'll probably want to be buried with my guitar. I know, right? You know? Like, you, so, you, your like grandfather had like an amazing baseball card collection. So you right. Bury him with that. No, he you wants bury to Jason go in with, with a machete. Yeah, he deserves that. I also like that he has a tombstone, and you know, he was. Re- he's in, he's uh, important enough for the community that he's you know just buried kind of among everyone else. Well, he's kind of very important to the community, actually, as we find out in part six. But we'll get there. Yeah, no, no. But I was just going to say, like, you know, that'd be tough if you're buying, like, a cemetery plot and you're walking around and you're going, um, can we not have the plot next to uh, Jason Voorhees? I'm sorry. We're all booked up. You're, that's all we got left. Okay. I don't right. think the residents take it. of Crystal Lake know anything about plots. <laughs> about cemetery plots or movie plots <laughs> I was making a sweet meta joke there yeah. um, <laughs> they right. do know about plots in the second one they in, sure in do. six I mean yeah. part six is a lot of it in a cemetery oh it's just yeah um, let's keep going. Let's streamline it because okay. I, I want to get. I'm ex, I'm as excited to talk about six as you are with five. So that's you, amazing. Yeah, um, you 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 got no idea, buddy. Oh, okay. Well, let's do this then. Yeah. Part five. Well, we're not done. Yeah. We're we're in the Pinehurst Youth Development Center. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a, a little camp for troubled teens. Or troubled twenty somethings, however you want to. Good point. Uh, you know they're all fucking, and except right. for Tommy Jarvis, he's there. Like, and Reggie, eh, Reggie, the reckless. Yeah, everyone's just generically hot, except right. for Tommy Jarvis, who's there. This fat kid who gets killed pretty early. We'll, we'll oh, get there. Man. Reggie the reckless, a young black fella. Yeah. 
a very young, right? Like he's right. the new Corey Feldman, basically. Right. And um, there's also that girl Violet, who's kind of like the goth chick. Yeah. Who yeah. I love. Whose name I didn't know until at the end when they keep going, Vi, Vi, Vi. Is yeah. that when she gets killed? Yeah. Yeah, she's dancing in her room. <laughs> Somehow I missed her name. And yeah. she gets murdered. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll do this. Okay. I was going to start the episode with that, but then that Alice Cooper song from part six was too good. Oh, no, that's, yeah, that's a, that's no. a no-brainer. But Violet, Violet's this goth chick, and she's wearing, like, headphones the entire movie. Like, that's right. her gimmick. And then in that scene, she's, like, dancing while she right. gets killed, and that's the song she's dancing to, and it's amazing. Yeah. That's my favorite scene in the movie. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's fair enough. It's got a, yeah. It got. It's got some good scenes though. Uh-huh. Okay. Um. Listen. Mm. Basically, the start of this movie is. I mean, it's a terrible movie, but <laughs> like, there's this fat guy, yeah. and he's there. Like, Tommy Jarvis is the main character of this movie, but he has like four lines of dialogue. <laughs> I did appreciate that they like continued the weird thing where he's like a, an aspiring makeup artist, though. Yeah, I thought that was a uh, uh, interesting and stupid, an odd you, bit of continuity from a series that usually doesn't give a shit about that. Yeah, and you know, you'd think he's not real into like scary things anymore, but uh, still going strong. Still, <laughs> still, still, still likes to uh, make horrifying uh, masks. And, uh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but the fat teen. Fat kid. He's outside and he's sort of like visiting between the groups. And it's uh, it's an interesting scene because like everyone's just sort of out. It's like their recreation time or whatever. Right, right. And it's like a scene from a high school movie where like, you know, a dude's walking around like the cafeteria. You know what I mean? Like, talking yeah, about, like oh, I sure do. Th- those are the fucking... That's the trench coat mafia, and and those are the popular kids. And there's the forty year old hacking wood. Well, that's a weird thing. And the scene is one of the teens is just he's a lumberjack, <laughs> but he's like swinging this axe at a piece of wood, and he sucks at it. Yeah, he's not very he's good. He's using the same piece of wood over and over again. Yeah. And well, it's- listen, the fat kid. He's eating the chocolate. He okay. goes over to the two hot girls doing laundry. Right. And he's like, let me help with the laundry. Right. And he grabs at it. But it's all clean and his hands are chocolatey. Right. So he fucks up their laundry. It sucks. And then he goes over to Lumberjack Guy and he's like, <laughs> "That was a mistake." yo, you want to borrow chocolate? And the Lumberjack Guy is like, no. But he puts it down. He's like, have it. He's a nice guy, this fat kid. Yeah. And the lumberjack guy swings at the chocolate with a fucking axe. Right. And then fat guy's like, why'd you do that? Right. And so lumberjack guy takes the axe, mm. fucks up this fat kid. Kills the fat kid. Just fucking murders him. <laughs> For no reason. And I look, mean, I, I've had people offer me chocolate bars before, but it has never made me that angry. And you're... The rest of the movie, like, lots of murders happen. This movie might have the highest body count of any Jason movie. Yeah, they just keep happening. Yeah. Like, one after the other. Yeah. There's so many. And this... Um, that kid dies, and I think you're kind of supposed to assume that for the rest of the movie, the killer is this lumberjack fella. Hmm. I. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what they want you to think. Except that the kid, they give you that thing about how the kid's father abandoned him, and then you see when that uh, uh, EMS guy 
yeah look makes a joke and the other guy uh, ems guy doesn't take it so well he, yeah he looks very significantly well yeah okay so the, <laughs> who did, did did you guess early on who the killer was no okay well you can't the killer's only in fucking two scenes right before he turns out to be the killer right it's a bad script but um so yeah the 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 paramedics come yeah. to like clean up this uh, fat kid's death Right. And one of the guys is this fun-loving fella, <coughs> and he like oh he takes the blanket off of him and he's like oh shit buddy yeah. look at this guy <laughs> <laughs> he's great but then there's another one who just sort of stares significantly at him and yeah. it turns out at the end of this movie the killer is this guy Roy <laughs> Roy who's a paramedic. And, yeah. um, and that's basically it. Like that's the killer. And, and then it sucks. It le- and then it leads you to believe in the end. Once Roy is uh, dispatched, uh, they uh, give you that last shot of Tommy Jarvis wearing the mask, and then you're like, uh, oh, what? Well, this- they're for sure setting up that Tommy Jarvis is going to be the killer in right. like part six and part seven. Right, but they realized that that was stupid, so they didn't do it. And so then, one of my favorite transition ever is from five to six, where like we're, we're left not the- there yet. Well, I just I was going to say there's been like two Tommy Jarvis transitions, right, from four to five. Where he ages. He, he ages, he and ages you, out of Corey Feldman. Right. <laughs> and you think, okay, he's damaged. And then you're like, okay, he is damaged, but he's still like a good guy. And then you get another transition where, oh, no, he's back to being a fucking lunatic. And then he's back to being normal. Not only normal, like noble. Part like, six, though, does the proper legwork, though, with that opening sequence where, like, they have to convince you, like, he's not a murderer. Right. He's here. He's played by a different actor because the previous one entered the seminary. Is that right? Do you know about that? Nope. The actor who plays Tommy Jarvis in part five never acted again, and it's because he felt uncomfortable working in horror movies and became a priest. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Wow, boy, this movie really did not sit well with a lot of people who were involved in making them, you know. You got you got like the first actress in the first one who didn't want to associate with them because of the stalker. Sure, you got Cunningham. You got Cunningham, you got you got uh, the first director, right? Uh, what's his name? That's Cunningham. He, who's the who did the second one? Steve Miner. Okay. Okay. So Cunning, yeah, Cunningham's the one who like disavowed it, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah. so Roy is the killer, and he's in two scenes. We see him that significant stare, which right. that scene's okay, and then we see him later, just like remind you he exists. Like the sheriff is like, "Hey, Roy, do this thing," and Roy's like, "Okay, buddy." Right. And right. and that's fucking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and by the way, if, if he's gonna be your killer, don't name him Roy. That's what's, not a uh, what's wrong with that? It's not a killer name. Yeah. And, and this was a thing. Like in the first movie, I remember there was like an IMDb trivia or something where like. Jason's name was something else in the original script mm. and they were like let's change that that's not scary Jason's a scarier name mm. and you know I feel that way here Roy it, Roy is not a scary name you know what I immediately thought of uh, when they said you know that it was Roy I instantly thought of Roy Hobbs from The Natural <laughs> okay it's Robert Redford's character, Roy Hobbs. Yeah, dude, I've seen The Natural, but I can't pull Robert Redford's character name. Oh, well, I'm, I, Roy Hobbs, man. Uh, that's an indelible character name for me, so I, I, I thought of it right away. 
What other Roys are there? I don't even know. Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers. Yeah, I'm thinking of Roy. I'm thinking about burgers, buddy. <laughs> I'm thinking about barbecue sauce. Yeah, yeah. Roy Rogers, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're still so early in this movie. Um, are we? You, you already said who the killer was. We, no, I well, did. Now it's time for rando points on the movie, sure. But that rando is this entire movie. Like, right, basically, so like the setup ahead. is pretty decently done. <laughs> I, I almost uh, said well done. I changed it uh, to decently. Yeah, good save. And, but the rest of the movie is just killing. And that's right. what I like about this part five. It's just killing and boobs. Right. That, and that's what you want from a Friday the 13th movie. It's not Jason, it's Roy. So that's right. big points off. Yeah. <laughs> but, at, but I love this movie. And, like, fans of Friday the 13th don't like this movie, and they love part six. Like, that's, like, the, the opinion. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah. I but, thought, like, the, the benchmarks were two and four so far. Uh, yes, but they like six. And, you, by the way, you might have a thing here with your um, even-numbered movies in the series theory mm. mm-hmm. yeah i think that might be a little accurate jeez i forgot about that. i said that that's yeah. right but well, it's right it's right so far it is but listen i don't understand these friday the 13th fans that hate the fifth one because what are you looking for these aren't good movies <laughs> right and right the, and so what what do you want from this series the sixth one's a good movie that's not what i want right <laughs> The fifth one is a terrible movie with like 21 deaths or something and a bunch of boobs. That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a large breast quotient. Yeah. Are you the talking quotient, about that one girl? Quotient of breasts. You talking about that girl in the woods? There's a there's a girl in the woods. Uh she just she You were charmed in, by her. She was a she, <laughs> Charmed. It's just so gratuitous. That word at this point should be like ixnade from our vocabulary. But uh, listen, that act. I mean, she, he's gone. The sex scene is over, and he walks away. It's meaningless. Yeah, <laughs> he walks away, leaves her alone, and there's just like this crane shot. Well, they probably didn't have a crane. Let's be honest. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it's like this crane shot of this girl, and it's just the top half of her. And, and, and it's just right in, it's in this the is, face. This is the only movie series where when, where when a character, like when a female character pulls like a blanket up to them, mm. it's just under their breasts. <laughs> That's this series. Never, never quite makes it all the way up. No, yeah. Yeah. all the way up. Fat Joe, great song. Um, oh my god! Listen, yeah. this girl in the woods. Mm. Her name is Debbie Sue Voorhees, the actress. I I looked her up. Yeah, yeah she was cast for three reasons. I can can I guess two of them? Yes. Her last name. Yeah. Her uh, breasts. No, that's all three. <laughs> that's I. That's three reasons. Yeah, yeah. her name Voorhees and mm -hmm. both of her breasts. <laughs> Those are two separate reasons. Okay, oh, that's I three. was, that's three I was throwing them in together. All right, yeah. I got. Um, listen. But she's not my favorite character in the movie. My favorite characters in the movie are the... the mm, here, here it comes. What do you think I'm going to say? I think you're going to say my LVP. Oh, I'm interested. Okay, my favorite by far mm. is the hick guy. The, yeah. the weird hillbillies that live next to this facility. Ethel Hubbard. Ethel is one of them and her son Junior. Yeah. <laughs> And they are just covered in dirt. <laughs> and I don't even know what they're going for with these characters. I'll tell you what they're going for. You know what I was reminded of? And I made a note. 
I was reminded of in the, in the 80s of how there was this terrible tendency to have horrifically overwritten dumb hick characters like in part uh, two is it with the uh, husband and wife who the wife is horrible and the husband's mute right that's part three okay <laughs> I can't that's gonna happen a lot still not uh, to me yeah I know and uh, they and they reminded me of characters like well they pretty, uh, reminded me of every character in Maximum Overdrive no you're right it, it, it is a kind of a Stephen King thing um, yeah, they're real Stephen Kingy, and uh, so Ethel Hubbard played and by, by the, the way, actor. Uh, the Simpsons, they they had Cletus the Slackjawed Yokel, which was a character that was clearly a comment on that trope. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Uh, Ethel Hubbard is played by Carol Locatelli, who is uh, can be found on episode uh, episodes of Scandal. Interesting. Scandal how do you like come that? up in part six. Okay, well, how do you like that? Yeah, I did a little... Re- yeah, I she, had, hand- she had a career, huh? Yeah, I couldn't handle any more research into her, but uh, that was just... that was. She had other stuff, but uh, she's still working. What about her fat, retarded son? He died of moonshine poisoning. <laughs> well, he definitely died of beheading in this movie. <laughs> He's just driving a motorcycle around for no reason, like he's mad about something. Like, screaming. fuck! He's just screaming. That's an incest family, by the way, right? Yeah. Like, oh, they're sure. fucking. Oh, that's... Ethel yeah. and her son? That's a real uh, Hills Have Eyes situation going Oh, my on God. There. Yeah, it's a real uh, season four, episode two of The X-Files, am I right? You could be. Home. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, my favorite line of dialogue in this entire movie uh, is from Edna. Mm-hmm. I wrote Ethel. It. Ethel, sorry. Her name's Ethel. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I wrote Ethel earlier on, and then I changed it to Edna in my notes for some oh, reason. Who cares? I think Edna might be the the like uh, hair curler lady from Part Three. I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, but her best line of dialogue is <laughs> to her son. Mm. You dildo, eat your fucking slop. <laughs> the best. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, Henry, <laughs> you met someone in this movie. Get, what? Yeah. I met someone in this movie? Yeah. So at one point, there are these two guys in leather jackets, and their car breaks down on the side of the road, and they're just cannon fodder. Like, they're just like, we need Jason to kill a couple more people. Okay. Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, uh, ha, uh, the car ha, breaks down on the side of the road. One of them's, like, under the hood trying to fix it. Oh, and the those other two. one's like, let me take a shit in the woods. Right, right. Those two, the, the guys who are uh, still continuing another one of my favorite 80s tropes where they all dress like they're in the 50s. But yes, yeah. okay. I'm still not with you. I met, oh, uh, okay. That guy uh, who's like messing around under the hood. Yes. He was a regular at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> it, it, just when we, a sh- just Henry, a shopper? And I, Henry and I both worked at the Barnes & Noble in Union Square for a while. <coughs> yeah. And this fella was all there all the time. Really? Yeah, he's a real New York guy. And I he don't... was shopping constantly. And I would bug him about Friday the 13th Part 5 over and over again. <laughs> I asked him about this movie like three times. That's great. Yeah. I, needless to say, would never have known that. Well, I, he, like, mentioned, like, he's an actor. Like, mm-hmm. he's one of these guys, like, who obviously is, like, a little charismatic. And so I Googled him once. Because mm-hmm. he was always ordering shit, so we knew his name. and information. Oh, one of those guys. Yeah. yeah, sure. And so he came up, and I, like, 
checked out his IMDb page. He had like 19 credits. They were all like New York credits, like he was in an episode of Law and Order. <laughs> right, right, right. Sure. But like one of them was like, oh, he's Vinny from Friday the 13th Part 5. And I was like, I know who that is. Oh, you went nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. And he looks exactly the same now. He just has gray hair instead of black hair. That was like seeing, uh, you know, Bruce Springsteen for some of our other well, friends. Well, I, I met Bruce Springsteen there. I met a lot of yeah. actual celebrities. Right, I but know. But yeah. fucking this guy, I was just like, yo, what was it like getting that fucking roadside flare in your mouth? Oh, now, yeah, that's right. That's a good death. That is yeah. a great death. He takes a yeah. road flare in the mouth. Yeah. He's great. Yeah, so I know that guy. Um, but how do you you said I met him I, I might you not have, for I, sure met him he was there all the time so I probably like helped him you mean there's yeah, no way yeah, I yeah. couldn't you, have no yeah. you 100% yeah. helped him at some point that's funny yeah okay alright yeah so he's great my second favorite character is Lana the diner waitress okay so um, there's a guy who works at this facility and he's bald and he uh Oh, okay, now he's I know going you're out for Lana, a night on Lana, the town. Right. Lana, he's, yeah. he's going out for a night on the town. He meets up with this girl, Lana. She's a diner waitress. She's yeah. super psyched to fuck this small, bald guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's not a looker. Not a looker. No. Not to be shallow, but uh, let's be. And yeah. so she is, like, closing up for the night. She goes into the bathroom. She pulls out her boobs for no reason and says into the mirror, Showtime! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then... <laughs> you know, he's doing coke in the car. <laughs> there's more drugs in this movie than most Friday the 13th. Yeah, movies. there's a lot of blow. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so Jason pulls up and he kills both of them. And they get these weirdly iconic deaths because Jason decides he's going to fucking machete them in their most iconic areas. Oh. So okay. he takes a machete in the bald spot. <laughs> Boom. Dead. And then she takes a machete right in the boobs. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. So boobs and bald spot, they really get it. Yeah. You're <laughs> his most iconic area. I for sure thought you were going to say, oh, yeah, he got it in the, in the nuts. But that was in another movie. Yeah. No, that yeah, that was in part four. God, how can you recall individual deaths? <laughs> I mean, because we must be at like 80 deaths at this point. You know, six movies it. in. Wow. I, I love these movies. Yeah. Okay. So, deaths start happening around this facility, and they all leave. They have to, like, go to, like, another thing. So, meanwhile, Reggie the Reckless, this black kid, yeah. they let him meet his brother. Mm. Demon. Right. <laughs> That's his name. Um, and Demon <laughs> lives in a van <laughs> and, has, and has a jerry curl. Oh, yeah. Does he ever? He's got the soul glow. He's also the only actor from this movie that had a career after this movie. Oh, good for him. Do you, do you, do you know him? No. You might know him as Juana Man. Oh, my God. <sighs> wow. All he right. was Juana Man. Demon. He also played Joey's friend on the show Joey. The Friends yeah. spinoff. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it sometimes a burden to you to know all this information? Is it? Is it I, I think it's the reason I'm not more successful. Because <laughs> I have to live with this in my head every day. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, okay. Listen, so right. then he gets <laughs> killed and his girlfriend, right? Like, he goes to take a shit. He's, like, constantly eating, like, like enchiladas or something, just, like, from yeah, his glove right. box. 
Um, and then she she goes to like scare him, right? She shakes the outhouse. Yeah, but then they both get murdered, and that's right. another one of my favorite parts of the movie because they're singing at each other. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah, and and they're just singing like she's going, "Hey, baby," yeah. and then he's going, "Ooh, baby." <laughs> and they go back and forth like five times and then all of a sudden she's not doing it and he's like baby <laughs> <laughs> and first of all i mean everything about that scene is amazing but like i don't think there's any girl that it, i mean no girl will ever be in love with you enough to sing t- for you while you're taking a shit in an outhouse <laughs> That's but, true uh, love. That's true it's, love. It's true love. But they both die. <laughs> and then we check back in with Reggie the Reckless, who's in this new home <laughs> with uh, yep. Pam, who's the final girl of this movie, but who yeah. could care? <laughs> um, she's like the female director of this camp. <laughs> and they're like, basically, they're the two survivors, her and Reggie. And they're like on the run from Jason for like the last part of this movie. Right, right. And, um,. Oh. Reggie like saves her life like twice. Yeah, he first he like no, he's not a he's not a helpless kid. He's he, not a helpless kid. He commandeers a tractor at one point. Or or commandeers. All right, fair. But you know you did you didn't do the research for that word. So <laughs> I've always said commandeers. Maybe that's wrong. And, yeah, it uh, is. But okay. Cares. And then, again, in the barn, like, she's about to be killed, and Reggie the Reckless just comes flying in here. And I have something to say about that. (laughs) They should have... Listen. He saves her. And he's calling her his girlfriend the entire movie, even though she's, like, 20 years older than him. Right. I think she should fuck him after this movie. (laughs) I think she owes him one. Yeah. All right. Is that sexist? I I, I don't know if it's sexist. No, it more, is. More than it would be uh, child abuse, but I don't know. Maybe they should make a deal. Like, listen, yeah. you when, saved when, my fucking life like right. three times, you little black kid. Right. When I, when you're 18. Right. Let's talk. I'll, I'll be waiting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be waiting. By the way, her name's Pam. Mm. Not great with character names the series. And um, <laughs> Pamela Voorhees is Jason's mom. Oh, jeez. I was thinking we might have a little Martha situation going on. Oh, yeah, like at the end of it? Like, yeah, like, be like... like in Batman vs. Superman. Right, right. Batman like v. She... Superman, Dawn of Justice. And right. so, like, uh, yeah, I thought it would be like, my... her name's Pam. And Jason would be like, huh? Right. <laughs> My mom's name was Pam. Right. Well, we could all. <laughs> well, Jason's already been fooled twice by having identity crisis, so uh, he could have that. Uh, oh yeah, that was the end of part two and part four with a bullet. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Just a thought. Oh. Um, and that's basically I- the end of this movie, right? The killer turns out to be Roy. No, yes. please, let, let's let's continue talking about this one for another hour and a half. Thank you. Roy is impaled. Um, he was wearing this Jason mask the entire time, the paramedic. He also, by the way, was wearing a bald cap. Did you notice that? I did. He because really went Roy all out. Roy has hair, and he went, he Jason went all out. is bald in this movie. And then when you see him, like, impaled, he's got, like, a little curled up, like, shitty bald cap around him. Yeah, I that that's the only thing that threw me off because uh, I was like, oh, surely the the character wouldn't have gone to the trouble of of putting on like a messed up bald cap, and he did. Yeah, and then the sheriff like explains like the motives to Pam. It's like a real psycho. It's, it's exactly psycho. It's it's that scene where he's like talking about, um, uh, you know, what's his name. <laughs> Anthony Perkins. Norman Bates. I Norman don't know. That Bates. escaped me for a second. Yeah, I almost yeah. said Norman Lear. <laughs> Archie! <laughs> the psycho fell down the stairs. Yeah. yeah. The creator of sad. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. The creator of um, all the family. Yeah. 
good that was times. Edith, that was Edith Bunker. In case I you... know it was Edith Bunker. All right, all right. And she got raped that one episode. I know. And uh, <laughs> it's actually a great episode. I joke about it a lot, but it's a legit great episode. Um, anyway, so they explain the motives, and it turns out this fellow Roy, the paramedic, was like the the father of the fat kid. Right. The fat kid was like an orphan, but his father was sort of watching him from afar, that kind of thing. Right, in that tiny town with ten residents. Yeah. They couldn't figure it out. And so Roy's the murderer. Uh, do you think there's uh, maybe like an anti-fat person thing going on in these movies? Because in... in uh, now you'll have to help me with which ones they were. But uh, who's uh, who's the droopy dog in... Uh, is that two? That's part, part two? three. That's part three, and then he's fat, and then the hitchhiker for no, no the reason. No, part two, the, the prankster is great. He's that skinny redhead guy. Right, right, right. Yeah. But then also in part three, doesn't the hitchhiker girl, the she's fat too, and she gets yeah. killed. And she's eating a banana. Listen, So they don't like fat people. Anymore. They don't like fat people, and if they do, they want to kill them. These films are very health conscious. Yeah. <laughs> The FDA has approval on all Jason movies. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're fat, um, you're dead. All right, let's wrap up. That's that's yeah. all I got to say about this. Let's these movies. let's do. Um what do you have for MVP, LVP, and star rating? I'm gonna give it four. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm driving you nuts on these movies. <laughs> uh, I'm giving it one. Fine. And, am- and the great thing about Friday the thirteenth part five and new beginning is I think the four-star rating and the one-star rating are equally applicable. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. My MVP, I'm going to give it to Tommy Jarvis. I thought that guy kind of, uh, you know, he did what he could with a very poorly he written He had some role. gravitas. Yeah, he's not a terrible Why actor. wasn't he saving Pam at the end of this movie? Why was it always Reggie the Reckless? Tommy was dealing with, like, his LSD hallucination flashbacks. He couldn't focus on anything my mvp is violet the dancer sure yeah sure. i love uh, her my lvp is ethel hubbard no come on i was close to mvp for the yeah for, for no, junior. I, just, I don't think in the fi- five movies in i had not wanted someone to get axed quicker but i think I, that's I, kind of the point yeah i don't well it may be it may well be but yeah. it wasn't soon enough okay so i was glad to see her go her and, uh, you know, Junior. My LVP is Reggie the Reckless's dad. <laughs> I just yeah. hate characters like that. He's sort of like the magical black guy. You're right. Like, yeah. like oh, let's go he's to the, him for advice. He's the Scatman Crothers of, the, of this movie. Yeah, that trope sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I like the actor. It's not a bad performance. Like no. he, he's a likable character. I just fucking hate that trope. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. And he dies anyway. So. And yeah. off screen, by the way, they don't even give a shit enough to kill him right. off on screen. Yeah. Yeah. He gets his eyes gouged out. Like we see. Yeah, him there's later a in the couple movie of eye. No eyes. There's a couple of eye gouges. Uh, doesn't. Doesn't uh, my girlfriend in the woods get uh, her eyes gouged out? Yeah, I think Jason uses his, like, bare hands more and more throughout the series. He uses his bare hands. He also gets uh, gardening shears. Oh, uh, that's how she dies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Some pruning. Voorhees in the woods. Yeah, right. she she gets uh, chopped with... The... By the way, and you see him use those gardening shears, and the next scene you see, like, the dude, like, come to find her. And I always want in that scene for her, him to like turn her around and like her heads off, like she he like chopped her head off with those gardening shears. Yeah, but that's not the case. He just sort of like chops at her head. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Glad you got that out of your system. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was an important thing to say. That's. <laughs> <laughs> so we move on to nineteen eighty six. Let's get to an actual movie. Yeah. Um. Listen, they're trying. Hey man, They're trying with this one. They did this one, I think, specifically. What uh, in 1986? I was eight years old. I think they made this movie for me 30 years into the future. 
for me to watch it in 2016. So By I the can, way, yeah. this movie came out August 1st, 1986. A day after your birthday. That's right. The day after I was born. Wow. How about that? That's something. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Yeah. Written and directed, a real auteur. Uh <laughs> Hey! By Tom McLaughlin. He sure is, man. On a budget of $3 million, box office 19. Not huge, but, you know, when you keep your budgets low, everything's a hit. I bet it didn't make as much money as The Golden Child. (laughs) Probably not. (laughs) Um, The same year, that's why I said it. Okay. Tom McLaughlin's worked a lot since this movie. Are you familiar with this fella? Uh, I only wrote one note about him, which might be my favorite note about a director. Ooh, what is it? Ever. Um, he was a mime. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't know that. He, was a pre- he, did, he did many things. He wore many hats, but one of them was a French beret, because he was a mime. He directed one of my favorite movies of all time, Henry. What's that? He's directed a lot of Lifetime TV movies. <laughs> and mm. one of them... Is a great film okay. called Cyber Seduction, His Secret Life. Hmm. And okay. that's a movie about a teen who's, he becomes addicted to jerking off. <laughs> Are you familiar with this movie? Am I familiar with the movie? No. And the whole movie is he discovers internet porn, Mm -hmm. and he just can't get enough. Yeah. And he's just watching it all the time, and he's starting to get in trouble. He gets, like, kicked out of school, and at one point, like, his girlfriend is, like, a cheerleader, I think, and she's, like, doing her cheer shit, and he's got her phone. And he's too. He hasn't had his fix. Uh oh. <laughs> and so he uses her phone to look up some internet porn. Oh boy. And then he's like, "Oh my god, how do I get this off her phone?" Right. It's amazing. Cyber seduction. His secret life. By Tom McLaughlin. Yeah, he directed it. He also directed the DC Sniper movie, which I think I watched at one point. Oh. Okay. Do you remember the DC Sniper? No, oh, uh, yeah, I was in college. Yeah, yeah. I remember when he was at large. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so well. that's what this movie's about. Like, he, it's called, like, DC Sniper, like, 23 Days of Terror. Right, right. Yeah, so that's what this guy did after this movie. Yeah. Um, I have some more stats. 1986 box office. By the way, I have a lot to say. I don't think we've covered 1986 yet, the year I was born. Oh, have we not? That's possible. I don't yeah. think so. Possible, yeah. There were two movies at number one and two that were way ahead of everything behind it. Behind them. Mm. And I think it says so much about where the country was in 1986. Okay. So, is it? are they like real Reagan-era type? Uh... They're just, one of them is, but the other one is so weird. Uh, go ahead. Number one is Top Gun. Oh, sh- sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And these two movies are like fifty million dollars ahead of whatever was after them. Mm-hmm. But number two, right behind Top Gun, Crocodile Dundee. Oh yeah. What the fuck? Yep. That movie was that big. That was huge, man. I I love that movie. I still do. Oh, we'll cover uh, them. Yeah. There's three uh, of those. <clears throat> yeah, the Crocodile Dundee. I, I remember that being huge. And um, uh, I always, I never liked Top Gun, but that doesn't surprise me. That uh, Yeah, that was sure. Crocodile yeah. Dundee, you're right. That really does capture that zeitgeist. Yeah. Yeah. The movies around part six on the list at number 46 for the year aren't interesting. But um, So let's get right into the movie. Tommy Jarvis... He's back. He's back. But yeah. not really. <laughs> Original Tommy Jarvis is Corey Feldman. Second Tommy Jarvis. He's a priest now. Right. Third Tommy Jarvis. Yeah. But we're sticking uh, with the character. 
Sure. And he's... Um, we didn't talk about the ambiguous ending of part five where, like, he's holding up a knife to Pam and it's like, oh, Tommy Jarvis, he's going to be... Well, I brought it up, but yeah, you, you don't want to get there yet. Yeah. Well, but, like, I mean, it's it, that was the plan. But then that movie right. didn't do that great, so we're bringing back Jason. Right. But we're not letting go of this Tommy Jarvis. No. So he didn't kill Pam. He's having these hallucinations of Jason... And he wants to go dig Jason up to sort of stop it, basically. But I think he's doing better mentally uh, in terms of... He's certainly uh, talking more. He has, like, five lines of dialogue. Right, and he's he's more... He's just solely concerned with ending the terror. Whereas in the other one, he's just kind of like, uh, you know, a misanthropic mute where he can't handle anything that's happened to him. He seems to be got his shit a little bit more together. Yeah, so the premise of Jason Lives, the sixth one, comes at you, like, from two ways. And one of them is Tommy Jarvis. He digs up Jason. (laughs) (laughs) He takes a big metal thing. It's like during a lightning storm. And he takes a... It's actually good atmosphere. Like, I'll I'll give Tom McLaughlin... It's it's kind of well directed. That's oh, I, it's absolutely well directed. The, yeah, I, I, I don't have any shame in saying the tone, the sense it's, of it's humor, moody. the direct. He wrote it and directed it. Yeah, so, yeah. No, oh, he he knew what he was doing. He's a talented man. fellow this time. It's genuinely about. funny. Yeah. Yeah, it is genuinely funny. It, it's the first intentionally funny movie. Everyone it's, says that like the first meta horror movie is um Wes Craven's new nightmare when he came back to do that seventh nightmare on Elm Street movie yeah. in the early nineties. I gotta submit Jason Lives. Nah, it's this. It's gotta be this. It is. It's very conscious of what it is. I mean I'm not i I'm not knowledgeable about enough about it to say that it is, but I, I ask you and, and I trust that you would say yes. I, I think it's this one. I think that new nightmare is a little maybe influenced by this movie. Yeah. I mean, um, there's, some, there's some funny lines in this movie. There are. Um, anyway, okay, so... So he stabs, he stabs he, him he's with, like, a, he with a fence Jason's fire. Corpse. Yeah, yeah, he sees yeah. Jason's corpse, and it's covered in maggots and bugs and shit, and he grabs this... What is it? It's he, from the fence? He, he grabs a piece of the fence and and stabs Jason through his the corpse, chest. and he's just like "fuck you, motherfuck." And yeah, that wasn't. I don't think that was his plan. I think he was originally just gonna immolate him. Yeah, I but think he got I think so he mad. Passion. Yeah, he got so mad again that uh, he stabs him. But before he can pour gas on him and immolate him, he uh, a little lightning storm happens, and uh, and then that lightning wakes him hits up. that fence spire. And yeah. reanimates Jason. And so yeah. now Jason is just a zombie. He's a yeah. supernatural being. He will be for the rest of the series. We've got we've got monster Jason now. <laughs> and they're treating him in this movie like just... Uh, apparently this Tom McLaughlin fellow is a big fan of the universal monsters. Mm. And so that's what this movie is influenced by. It's, yeah. it's, it's a real... Uh, James, James Whale, is that that fellow's name? Who directed yeah, uh, the original Frankenstein? Wow, I, I don't know, oldie timey guy. <laughs> I think making so. a, making another appearance this week's episode. <laughs> sure, I think that's what it's influenced by. Remember and, the, and mummy, I mean, the mummy with Claude Rains. There is a point in this movie though where there's like a convenience store, and it's like the sign says it's the Karloff convenience store. Oh, good catch! I yeah. didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's this movie basically. That's the tone. That's what we're dealing with. And, yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's genuinely good. Yeah. And I Jason, don't like it as much as part five. Yeah. But I love, I love if it. we're talking about, this is the first movie in the series that's an actual movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that betrays uh, a little bit of what I think it betrays the series. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, interesting narrative. Yeah. It's, it's just really good. And um, even uh, even Harry Manfredini, he takes it up still, a notch. He's still, still around. around. I know. Oh, uh, he uh, takes it up a notch by um, you know before he was uh, ripping off John Williams Jaws, and that 
carried through for quite a few movies. Didn't realize that he shouldn't do that. Just kept doing it. Now he's ripping off Tangerine Dream. He, well, right, and he is just verbatim taking the Gregorian chant of the DS Ray, and that is throughout Ooh, the movie. Look at you. Well, it's 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 the theme of the movie. It's it's the main theme, except of, for the three songs that Alice Cooper wrote for. We'll the get song. there. We'll get there. But you know the DS Ray, right? The no. DS Ray. Oh, okay. La di 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 di. Over and over and over and over, but like synthesized. Yeah, so there's he, a lot of synthesizing. So like he just, we're, we're officially 80s now. Like the aesthetic of the first five movies are a little 70s. Yeah, it but, always takes it always takes like five years into a decade, I think, to get into that. But this movie, decade. the hair, the hair, and yeah. the clothing. Is right. so 80s. There's a girl wearing a belly shirt with suspenders underneath it. There's a guy wearing a belly shirt. Yeah, there sure is. That was a thing in the 80s. <laughs> He's the one that dies in the in the big camper. Yeah, Court. Court, that's his name, yeah. One of my, one of my favorite names. I loved him. Court. Yeah. C-O-R-T. It's yeah. true. Um... Yeah, um, but, you know, so essentially then he runs, Jason's just running amok. And I liked even, like, the depiction of Jason beyond the monster thing. I just, I love how he's just, whoever is playing him, he's just walking with purpose. And they recast it. Um, Yeah, I saw that. They filmed, like, one scene with a, a different Jason, and then they got this guy. This guy's got a fucking tool belt. He's great. He he is just he's stealing shit from these these corporate guys who are out in the woods playing paintball. Yeah, well, I, well, I said this movie runs on two fronts, and one of them is Tommy Jarvis like searching for Jason after he reanimates him. Right, and he sort of befriends um, the sheriff's daughter, who's like the final girl in the movie. Right, um, but then there's also this camp opening up, and I love this camp because a. I said in a previous episode, we never see campers in Friday the right. 13th. Oh, there's campers all over this fucking thing. Yep. And, and, they're, and they're funny. They're really <laughs> fucking funny kids. Oh, um, my God. What's your favorite line? I mean, I know what my favorite line was. I mean, well, there's forget there's favorite line. There's one line where, like, Jason's roaming around, and we get this montage of the campers sleeping. And, you know, some of them are doing, like, one's holding, like, a picture of his family and shit. And then we see this little fat girl, and she's got a book open. Like, she fell asleep reading. And the book is fucking No Exit by Sartre. (laughs) That's fucking genius. Wow. Wow. That's wow. so funny. I but didn't catch that. I thought you, I thought you were going to talk about the – wasn't there one reading a comic book? There was. I couldn't fi- figure out what comic it was. Yeah, I know. I couldn't either, but, uh, I, but I, then mi- I missed the start. The best yeah. line from the campers, though, is um, they're all hiding under beds. Right, right, And right. one of the kids, like, turns to another camper and says, So, what were you going to be when you grew up? <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking good. It was such a great line. Yeah. And it might even be, it might even be like, well, the kid delivers it so well. Like he says like, well, I think he says, I might be wrong, but I thought he said, well, what did you want to be when you grew up? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. And then, isn't there the same kid says also like, to the to his friend who's like, what's going on out there? And the kid goes, Oh, we're fucked. Yeah, yeah. Or we're screwed or yeah, something. I don't they're... know if the kid could say fuck, but yeah. Oh, man. They're great. The campers. And so, yeah, we're dealing with this camp, and it's Camp Crystal Lake from the first movie, right. but they've, like, rebranded, which is kind of great. Yeah. Like, it's called something. What is it? It's called Forest Green. Right, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I liked all the stuff in the prison. And, by the way, the paintball yep. game, which yep. is happening on the campgrounds, which <laughs> I really appreciated because right. I, as a kid, went to a day camp, mm. Camp Jubilee, 
And at night, it turned into a paintball grounds. Oh. So, like, it was so weird. Like, you'd be at camp, and, and it's, like, in the woods, basically, like this. And all the trees had, like, little spots of paint on them. Oh, okay. From these paintball games that happened after you left. Sure. And so, listen, this movie really captured my experience. There you go. And came out a day after I was born. Yeah. I should love this movie. Well, I hope you do. Well, I kind of do, but I don't have the same sort of affection that I have for some of the shittier movies. Yeah. It's it's yeah. kind of too good for this series. Well, it's just, for me, like, it's... It's just so competently made. Uh, it's really that's, the... That's a problem for me. I understand. <laughs> I, I Like you said with your rating of the star in the last one, where you said they're both acceptable, Like I completely get where you're coming from, but for what I find... What I remember of what, of seeing these films like this is what I want. I want I want Zombie Jason. I want him getting this shot is, and This torched is and, your Friday the 13th in the way that like 2 and 4 are mine. Definitely. Okay. Like I just you know, he's an unstoppable force. He's like he's more he's more channeling like the first the, the Michael Myers of the first two Halloweens, you know, just an unstoppable. Even more than that, man. He's just a flat right. out zombie in this Right, movie. right. Yeah. He gets and shot so many times. And I liked that we, for the first time, I believe for the first time, five doesn't count, but we don't get an unmasking. Because we, we always, well, we always get an unmasking. The get is at the beginning when he's just covered in bugs. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, he's not, he doesn't have a mask on. By the way, they totally buried him with his hockey mask. Right, another nice, you know, sentimental touch. Yeah. You know? With the mask. How sweet. It was sweet. <laughs> um, oh, can I mention the... Uh, I'm sure you, I'm sure you, we're, we're going to mention this. Uh, gotta ma- uh, oh, yeah, you were going to mention it because of Scandal. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Goldwyn's first movie ever. I looked it up. Yeah, he's a legit He'd actor. never done anything. Yeah. He had never done anything. I didn't expect that. Yeah, that guy. So we see these counselors. It's like a guy and a girl. They're going to be running the camp. And they're driving up, and they, they get stopped by Jason, and they get killed. And um, the rest of the movie, ever, all the other counselors are like, where are the fucking head counselors? And I think, uh, I could be wrong, but I think his girlfriend utters the first meta line. Yep, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen enough horror movies where there's a guy in a mask. I, I don't want any part of it or something like that, right? Cause, yeah, yeah. Because he's like, let's just drive around or let's just scare him. You know, that was. And move. then and then they they drive the car up to him and Jason doesn't move and she yeah. goes, uh, yeah, you really scared him. <laughs> right, that was another great line. It was Boy, good. Really, she goes, you scared? Why? Wow, you really scared the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. So that dude is Tony Goldwyn, who is now the president on Scandal. You know, Fitz. He's like the male lead. Right. Um, there's a couple of other notable actors in this movie. Can I hit me up? I I don't know who they I are. I always search the actors after the Friday the Thirteenth movies because so few of them ever do anything again. Right. So I like when I find people that do. Sure. Um. Uh. One of those paintballers. Oh. Yeah, he he has like he's one of these people that have like two hundred credits on IMDb. Okay. And uh, but I know him as the town rabbi in Gilmore Girls. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Um, and the black girl with the suspenders underneath the half shirt. Yeah, she looked familiar, but I didn't get around to looking I, her I up. I don't know her from anything, but I looked at her IMDb page, and she was in 1,227 episodes of Days of Our Lives. Okay, then I don't know her. <laughs> How amazing is that? That's, wow. She That's looks, a lot of them. She looks a little bit like Lark Voorhees from Saved by the Bell. Uh, okay. You know, the, the, the Lisa. Yeah, vaguely, dude. That Saved by the Bell. I was not. That was that was more your era. Your age than... sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Tell that to my back. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> <laughs> tell it to my arthritis. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I was I was not you know saved by the bell. I know the show, but uh, I don't. Great I don't, show. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So uh, let's let's uh, let's segue into Alice Cooper, shall we? Alice Cooper wrote three songs for Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. One of them you heard at the start of this episode. Yeah. He's back, the man behind the mask. Yeah. He also and, and, wrote Teenage Frankenstein. Yeah. And a third one that plays at one point that's not as interesting. I mean, what you know, what more could I'll just speak from my own. What more could I want from this movie? You know, it's got Are you actual, a fan of Alice Cooper? No. But I I love Alice Cooper like as a per, as like a cultural icon. I think he's great. I love him. I don't I'm not a fan of his music. He but, had one album I liked. Yeah. When I was in high school. What is it called? Like Billion Dollar Babies? Is that I don't thing? remember. I don't I'm gonna remember. Google it while you're talking about it. Okay, Cooper. yeah. I, I just I just think his is I mean, we got like a real famous musician for once and we don't have like what were that what was that band in part two like the smoking joes talking, or whatever yeah well that there was that and then in part four when um crispin glover's dancing he's dancing to a band called lion right so we got you know we got alice cooper we've got zombie jason we've got a good direct we've got a good director uh at least for this one time and uh you know, it, it just uh, hits it out of the park for me. Hits it out of the park. And by the way, billion dollar babies. I was right for some. Okay. Reason. How did I All get right. that? That's not the one I was thinking of. I, I was thinking of something else that he had. Do you have his discography? Up I there? do. Yeah. I mean, welcome to my nightmare was a pretty big record. That, that's what I. That's what I. Yeah. 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 But bill, billion dollar babies was the one. I think it came out a year after he put out Schools Out, so it's like super early seventies. Yeah, like, I yeah. just, I just think he's like, I love Alice Cooper's whole thing. I just think he's great. I'm just not a fan of his music, but I just love his whole. I, I love. He's a really funny guy to his real life. Yeah, no, he's smart. He's like one of these. Oh yeah, he's one of these like weirdo like. Um, <laughs> metal guys where right. it's like oh he's actually smart and he's like the opposite of like gene simmons who's like oh, who's total yeah because he's self-aware and gene simmons thinks he's awesome right he thinks he's awesome he thinks yeah. he speaks with that like over uh overly pronounced diction just to make sure you know he's smart and like alice cooper yeah by the way, I'm on the Billion Dollar Babies Wikipedia page. That album has no more Mr. Nice Guy on it. So I probably oh. discovered Alice Cooper through Dazed and Confused. Oh, well, that, that's, a, that's a great song. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I'm sure he has songs I'm not even thinking of that I like. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you good ones. School's, yeah, I mean, out, you, school's Out's a classic. Right. That's great, too. I mean, you asked if I'm a fan, and I said, well, not, not a fan, but. No, I guess. yeah, for sure. But he's, he, you yeah. know, he's a valuable member of the uh, music landscape. Absolutely. Well put. Yeah. yeah. It's a music landscape. But uh, that song he wrote for this, uh, the, uh, the, the, the final credits one. Man by oh, the Mask. That, those lyrics are just. Down at Lover's Lake, and you're yeah. on the make. <laughs> yeah. And you hear a voice, <laughs> and he comes out he's of... He's out of control. Because he's <laughs> out of the hole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was the lyrics writing session for that? That, oh, that would have been fun. Two seconds. Oh. <laughs> it, must, it was a real Jay-Z situation. Meaning what? Jay Z goes into the studio and like he like hears the beat for the song like once and he's like, "All right, all right, I got it," and he mm. like doesn't write anything down and then he goes into the studio and just records. Oh, okay. Yeah, which makes <laughs> him even more impressive. Yeah, and I just I, it's got that great '80s bridge, you know. He's back, you know that like that kind the of the man up. behind the mask. <laughs> I can't get enough. No, it's, I can talk about the lyrics all day. Uh, yeah, what, it, should we talk about other stuff from this movie? Sure. I mean, I, you know, pick something. I don't know. I, 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 I want to. I love. Up I, in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love the 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 ending. I thought it was really good. Just genuinely like tense. I I loved. Um, some oh, you real mean good, 
you mean Tommy going out into the into the lake and shit? Yeah. Yeah, he and goes like, down to the lake and he like gets Jason to come out with him. He lures Jason. Oh, by the way, right, another sort of uh, he does kind of revert to the psychology thing going on there. Yeah. Like th- this is where you died. And and by I'm the, the way, one who, yeah. Tommy mm. is haunted by Jason this entire movie. Yeah. And I get it. Jason killed his mom. But <coughs> shouldn't Tommy be more haunted by Roy? Hmm. Because Roy, in part five, killed <laughs> way more people that Tommy was familiar with. Yeah, but Tommy didn't really care about any of those people, right? Like, Tommy lost his whole family, you know. His in, sister's in, still around. I guess we assume that, yeah. She's still yeah. alive at the end of uh, the final chapter. Right, right, right. <laughs> the final chapter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, no, that is good. The The ending of this movie, when he lures Jason out to the lake and he sort of pours gasoline around his canoe and lights yeah, it on fire. Yeah, I mean, that's really cool. It's very cinematic. And, yeah. and then he has this, like, fight underwater with Jason. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, we're talking about a franchise here where where part six is now, like, a real movie. Yeah, they're finally figuring out how to make a movie. And it's funny because I think, like, the, the actual critics... I didn't even bother at this point, but I'm sure it was just dismissed by, like, the Maslins and the all the others. Just I saw like, a Gene Siskel quote. Oh, about six? Mm-hmm. What did he say? He said, it's the least offensive film in the most offensive franchise of all time. Oh, okay, so he's coming around. <laughs> that guy sucks. I'm glad Gene Siskel's dead. <laughs> I uh, I wish I Jason killed him. <laughs> Gene Siskel should have gotten a fucking machete through the face. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. But, uh, <laughs> I'll let you. For me. Uh, yeah, I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you fly around in a wheelchair for that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Wrap it up. You want to wrap up? Yeah. Wait. Let me let me glance at my notes. See if I have sure, anything sure. else of note. No, probably not. I I got an MVP and an LVP. Hardcore. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna give my LVP uh, to really the only character who, you know, he he's got his benefits, but I could have done without him. Uh, and that is uh, somebody else I think you liked, but that is Court. Oh, Court's great. Court's, Court's just there bad. to die, I think. He's just, right. But he's like the only male character in this movie other than Tommy Jarvis. Oh, that's a good point. There were a lot of girls in this yeah. movie. It's, yeah. It's a real female. It's a, it's a real Ghostbusters situation. <laughs> and, yeah, she... <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the one sex scene in the movie, too. Um, no nudity. First Friday oh, the 13th, sure. no oh. boobs. Oh, okay. And it's fine. The story is strong enough that you don't notice it, really. Yeah, I don't think this guy was interested in doing that. I just think no, he, he didn't care. He yeah. wanted to make an actual horror movie. Um, he apparently specifically didn't like that the Friday the Thirteenth movies were perceived as like moral, like moral lessons because like the people who had sex and did drugs got killed, oh, and so okay. he didn't put sex and drugs in the movie because he didn't want that to be a thing okay yeah interesting yeah he's an interesting guy go watch yeah. cyber seduction his secret life yeah i won't but all right yeah um my mvp is jason jason's great zombie jason he's, he's my about. mvp because i just love every he's just kicking ass he looks great it's a great incarnation, and uh, that actor just uh, uh, killing and walking with purpose. I'm I'm going MVP Jason too. All right, this is the best Jason. Yeah, it's not the best Friday the Thirteenth. Right, but it's the best Jason. Okay. Um, and my LVP, Tommy Jarvis. Enough of this guy. He's good in this, though. I, I, I thought the actor was good. I, Whatever, I, I, man. Yeah, you're sick of him. 
And she's busting him out of jail. Like this Megan, who's the final girl, who's the sheriff's daughter, like busts Tommy Jarvis out of jail. And it's like, at the time, he's a suspect for the Jason murders. Right. And it's like, you're busting this guy out of jail who's accused of some brutal murders. Yeah, but she doesn't buy it for a second. Maybe she should. Well, yeah, her dad's not the smartest cop in the world, so... Uh, by the way, how about his death? How does he die? Uh, he is broken in half backwards. Oh, in the yeah, woods. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's some good deaths in this movie. Yeah, there are. He doesn't use as many like weapons. Like that's a thing. Like the Friday the Thirteenth right. movies fall back on. Like the fun thing is let's let him use a bunch of different tools. Right. But right. the deaths are more sort of ingenious in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, they are. That was that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going four stars. Me too. Are yeah. you? Yeah. I and I got to tell you. This Because one, it's a solidly it's a solidly good horror movie and that was is why the revelation. I'm giving it for you. Yeah. This movie of the series has been the revelation to me. Because all the previous films I've liked exactly as much as I remember liking them. Mm-hmm. And this one is good. I, I yeah. think I I never watched this series with the quote-unquote critical eye before. Right, right. And if we're doing that, like if, if we're not doing that, if we're trying to watch Friday the 13th movies, this one sucks. Okay. It sucks because it's not. It's too good. Right. But if we're watching right. it, like actually judging these movies on a critical level, this right. is a good movie. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go for it, too, and I'm conflicted. And it might be low in my rankings just because of nostalgia, but... That is going to be hysterical. That's going to take us 20 minutes when we're at the end of these to rank all 11 <laughs> movies. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Mine will be pretty easy. <laughs> I've already started thinking about it. Like, look, it's going to be 4-2 and then well, I some can't. other stuff. Yeah, I can't, so not yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah. And the last one's going to be nine, I think. All right. All right. Easy.